All right, guys. So in this whole solution video, I'm going to break it into two different parts. In this first video, I'll be explaining you the concepts of Gaussian function. Okay. So for the students who are not at all aware about the Gaussian function, this video is specifically made for you. And for the students who are already aware about the concepts of what is a Gaussian function, what is the mean, what is standard deviation and how it governs the whole function, you can skip this video. Again, okay? you can just watch the second video because in the second video is something that you had all exactly asked for. Okay. That is how you can create a Gaussian kernel 2D uh, for yourself. So yeah, that's something that I'll be explaining you in the second video. So in this video, let us start in, uh, start by understanding what is a 1D Gaussian function. Okay. So for that, what I'll do is I'll just create a function called Gaussian. It's going to take one input. That's why it's called 1D Gaussian function. And it's going to generate some kind of output. Now, what is the output? I'll just take some kind of part from this particular formula. As you can already see that I've highlighted something that is e to the power of negative x square, right? So e to the power of negative x square. Now, how can I code this? It's the exactly same thing that you are seeing over here. Okay. And this formula was something that you had seen in your assignment. I'm just explaining each and every part step by step, starting with the first thing over here. Let me return this uh, so that we get this as an output np dot exp negative x square. Our function is ready. Now we just need to create some kind of inputs. Let me just create inputs in between minus three to three np dot lin space. Why did I choose this value? I'll tell you in, uh, in a while. Okay. Let me just say that I'm going to use 500 different values in between minus three to three. And the respective output is nothing but the Gaussian, uh, Gaussian output on those respective x values. Okay. So my x and y values are ready. Now it's time to display it. I can use pyplot.pl uh, plot x and y and then also showcase it over here. Let's see how the output looks like. Oh my God, this, <laughs> this thing is hurting my eyes right now. I'm just going to change the background. So plt.style.use dark background. Okay. So yes, this is the kind of output that we are having. The important two things you need to understand over here is on what value this whole graph is centered about. Okay. And the second thing is what is the spread of this specific graph? On the x axis, you are having these values in between minus three to three. Again, the reason I chose these values because I wanted to show that on zero, you are having the maximum value. Okay. Because on zero, it is centered, uh, the whole function is centered at x equal to zero. Okay. And then as you go towards right or left, because the graph is symmetric, uh, what happens? Yeah. It's going to decrease in the same way on both the sides. And you can clearly see that as we are going away from zero in either of the direction, the values are starting uh, to fall and eventually it somewhere starts to like, you know, converge towards zero. Now, what happens if I am closing this and expanding the uh, lin space from not minus eight to three, but rather let's say minus five to five, what happens then? Now I'll have to change this a lot of times. So I'll just create one variable called as limit and set a one value over here and everything will be changed automatically. Okay. So yeah, this is something I want to do. Yeah, let's run it. As you can clearly see that, yeah, somewhere after just right after negative two only, we were getting some kind of convergence about zero on both the sides, right? So this is called a spread of this whole function. Okay. More the standard deviation, more the spread you will be getting. So let's say if you want to uh, have more values in your Gaussian distribution in terms of like, you know, x axis, more of these values give some kind of output. In that case, you will have to increase the value of standard deviation. I'm explaining it everything in the layman terms so that you are able to understand. Okay. Now, in order to demonstrate this, what I'll need to do is I'll need to increase the value of the spread. How I can control the value of the spread? It's with this particular term that we are having uh, over here. Okay. So I'm just going to copy this part and paste it over here. Okay. Now you can clearly see that we are also passing the value of sigma. This is nothing but the spread, the standard deviation. So over here, let me just choose the standard deviation of two. And uh, now let's say we are going to visualize it. Now I don't really see a lot of change. I'll just increase the value of Sigma to let's say five. Again, I cannot see any kind of change. Why? Let me just see what is the issue. Uh, we are passing the Gaussian. Everything looks 
oh yeah it's because i have to pass it over here like this okay now i'm going to run this now clearly we can see that the spread has increased now this is just the top part of that whole bell curve that you are seeing just look into the magic once i'm increasing the limit from minus 5 to 5 to let's say minus 10 to 10 let's see what happens in this case still the graph is not like you know flattening about zero there are still more values that i can take in let me now go to minus 20 to 20. Right? See, somewhere over here after minus 15, somewhere in between minus 15 and 20, 15 and 20, this kind of values are approaching towards zero. So as we increase the value of sigma, that is the standard deviation, more values you take in your x in which you are going to get some kind of output. And now typically you can see that the output is in between zero to one. Now if you want to also get a control over that with respect to the sigma values, what you can do, you can uh, plug in this part of your equation. I'm going to copy this part, multiply it at the end. You can also do it at the front, it's your choice. And it's np.py, not pi. Yeah. Yeah, now if I'm running this. Yeah. So now what I have done, you can see the values on the left hand side, that is the output, has now changed from 0 to 1 to 0 to 40. So that's what is controlled by the sigma factor uh, with this whole term that we are having multiplied with the original term that we had seen in the beginning, right? So this part, the whole, this kind of part has been taken care of, okay? It's just the y square that we have not understood is because it's a 2D function. So let's not talk about the y square and yet look into the output once again. So over here, as you can see that the x values control is also something that we are able to have now because of sigma. And same goes for the y values. The main part that is important for you to understand is that at zero, you are going to get the maximum value. And as you go towards the extreme endpoints, you are going to decrease the value slowly, slowly, and somewhere it's going to converge. It's going to start to converge uh, about zero, right? So this is the whole idea that we are having over here. And uh, yeah, as simple as that, we are now going to jump into the 2D function. So I'm just going to create this as a 2D function. Okay. And uh, now along with X, I'm going to pass in Y. And I'm also just going to get rid of this. And the only thing that I have not uh, taken care of in this formula is this part over here. Okay. I'm just going to add this with plus Y square. And now it's a 2D function. I'm also going to pass in, let's say Y. But now what is the Y? Y is something that I have not yet defined, right? So I'll just copy this part and say that this is my y. Okay. And let's say this is my z. This is my z. And now I'm going to just display everything in a 3D model. So for that, what I'll do is I'll just use plt.subplot. plt.subplot and uh, going to use projection is equal to 3D. Okay. And now after this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to visualize plt.plot x, y, and z. Okay, that's something I want to do. And then lastly, plt.show. Let's run this. Yeah, I again need to change the background. plt.style.use. What kind of style do I need to use, guys? Dark background. Why? Because my eyes are hurting. <laughs> Simple as that. So, yeah. This is the kind of output that we are having. Even the color is not looking that great about the curve. I'll also change that to let's say red. Um, red. And uh, oh, I should say color is equal to red. And line width I want to use of two. And yeah, now let's go ahead and visualize it. Yeah, this is looking much better, right? So yeah, over here, uh, what I can uh, do is I can also fix the figure size plt.figure fix size. What kind of fix size? Let's say um, 5, comma, 5, no, 7, comma, 7, let's say. Yeah, this is better. Okay. Yeah, so uh, again, you can see that now when x is given and y is given, I'll also label the x's. Okay, so let me just go ahead and label plt.x label as x values. I'm going to give a color to this as well. Let's say I'm giving magenta. 
just going to copy this part, paste it over here. And this is my Y values. And this is for Y label. Let me run this. Yeah, so now you can clearly see that this is your X values and Y values. And this is the Gaussian output that you are having over here. Again, it's lying in between 0 to 40. And uh, you can see that the spread of the function is just very similar to the 1D that we had expected. And the maximum value is again on what it's on 0, 0 as you can see. Okay, if I just rotate this kind of curve and just show you in a proper way. You can see that over here is also 0 and uh, over here also it's 0. And on that part you are having that particular maximum value. If I can just increase the size to let's say 10 by 10, let's see what happens. Now see this part, just look at this zero and this zero. Both of this line are intersecting over here, right? So on that intersection, you will be seeing that we are having that maximum value, that maximum value, okay? So yeah, that's something I really wanted to show that when the value of X and Y both are zero, in that case, in the 2D Gaussian, you are going to get the maximum value. Again, you can control the spread. If you want to spread it more, you can increase the value of Sigma to let's say a seven and let, let's run it again. You can see that now there is more spread, right? Let's say if I want to just get out of the range of minus 20 to 20, I'll, let's say I'm just choosing a random value, let's say 15. See, now you're going to get basically more access to different values. Your kernel will have larger, like, you know, circle that you had seen in the kernel, right? Larger circle, you'll be getting the radius of that circle will be large. That's, that's it. That's about it. Okay, so I hope that the concept with respect to uh, Gaussian function is clear over here that uh, in Gaussian function there are two main important things that you need to think about. What is the first thing? The value at which it's centered about which we call as mean. It is at 0 comma 0. X is 0, Y is 0. What is the second thing you need to know? Spread. And spread is controlled by what? Sigma value which you also call it as a standard deviation. Now, this is the concept with respect to how a Gaussian function works in 1D and 2D. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use this concept in order to create your own Gaussian 2D kernel, like what you wanted to create by looking into the different kind of codings online available. And even the students in the Slack channel had shared their own uh, code, right? How you can create something like this by yourself. So yeah, I'll be explaining everything again, step by step in the second video as well. So if you understood this particular part, well and good, but let's say if you're having still any kind of doubts, you can reach out to me on Slack and ask that. This is the thing that I've still not understood and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So yes, guys, that's it about this particular video. I'll see you in the next.